Hey guys, season 12 is here and I'm sure you're all excited to play ranked again and try to climb further than the previous season. With a fresh season, it can go a long way to start with the right mentality and a few important things to focus on as you climb. So today I'm going to run you through the most important things in my opinion that you need to be successful this season. If you keep these tips or tricks or whatever you want to call them really in the back of your mind, I can guarantee you you have a successful season in the top lane. So let's just jump right in now to the first most important thing you need to focus on and that is laning. You need to understand how important laning phase is, especially as a top laner. And this sounds obvious, but I'm not just telling you laning is important. I'm saying that you need to really focus on laning. This means if you're going to devote any mental energy to trying to learn something from the game you just played, devote it to the laning phase. If you're not winning lane in at least 60% of your games, you probably won't be able to climb. When it comes to laning, there are a few tips I can give you to start off. Let's use this game I played on a smurf and gold where I'm playing Cho vs Riven. Riven has ignite and I brought TP. The concept I'm about to go over will apply to anyone so don't worry if you don't play these two champs. Also, I'm using a gold replay to show you how well these fundamental concepts work in the lower ranks. As we get into it, notice how Riven isn't in lane right away. This is something you should train yourself to pay attention to every single game because this means she's leashing so the enemy jungler started topside. Knowing this, he should clear to bot side and I shouldn't be gankable. Also, with Riven leashing, this means I can get the push advantage at level 1 and can start stacking up my grasp. Riven finally shows up and she's missing a little health so she was definitely leashing. I have a small push advantage, which is what I want. I don't want to push too fast or the minions will crash on the tower on the second wave, but I want to crash 3 waves. By crashing 3 waves, I will get level 3 first and basically control the lane for the first 3 levels at least. Anyways, I use my E on the minions to hit Riven with the splash while also clearing the first 3 melee minions. If we pause, look at Riven's positioning afterwards. She's running towards me here after I did that. This immediately tells me she's looking to jump in and do what every Riven does and do Q, auto, Q, auto, Q, auto. They all do this because of how strong Riven's level 1 is, but I do multiple things to combat this. I already did two of them, which was getting the minion advantage and stacking up my grasp. She jumps in with her two Qs, but let's pause again. I did something really important here, did you catch it? When playing top lane, you usually have melee vs melee matchups, and it's really important to trade back auto for auto with enemy laner when they jump in, in most scenarios. But because Riven's Q gives her auto resets, and because I created space between us after I used my E. By walking away from her while she's using Q, I forced her to use her second Q to get close enough to me to auto attack. So she couldn't use it to reset her auto after the first Q. This is a significant damage loss for her. I kite into the brush and now that she used her Qs to get on top of me, I can start trading back autos. Notice here how after I auto her, I actually move forward, not backwards. This is because I already knew I should win this all in based off everything that's happened but I did pop my potion late, which was a mistake. Then, as my E is coming back up, I 100% need to make use of the auto reset to win this. This is another extremely important part to playing top laners. Almost all of them have auto resets. Camille Q, Jax W, Darius W, Cho E, Riven Q, Alawi W, etc. are all examples. It can be the difference between winning or losing a fight easily. So when my E comes up, I auto first, then E, and Riven ignites me, but I finish with my next auto for first blood. If I didn't reset my auto with E, I probably would have died. But now that Riven is dead, I want to focus on pushing the wave so I can reset, especially since she doesn't have TP. Sadly, the enemy jungler, Trundle, shows up, and I don't flash away because I would just die anyways. But I was really confused since in my mind he started at his red buff, but he only had blue. Then I realized he started at our jungler's blue, so there wasn't much I could do about this. This brings us to tip number two that you need to be successful this season, and that's understanding how to use TP, in lane and out of it. We can use an in-lane example here. If we look at the wave after I die, it's pushing to Riven, meaning if I don't TP in, my minions will kill hers the whole time I'm running back, and I will lose a ton of experience. Experience is so important in the early game. If you are ever in this situation, especially in the first 5 levels or so, you have to use TP. Too many low elo players have the mindset that they want to save their TP for a perfect moment or for a team play, which is harder to do now with the TP changes, but this concept is still important because let's say the wave is basically reversed and it's slowly pushing to me instead. Then I can just save my TP, as I won't really miss anything while walking back to lane. We'll get into out of lane TP decisions in a little bit, but anyways, because of the wave state, I have to TP back to lane right away. I'm in an awful situation. If you ever have heard the term weak side or split map, that's what's happening here. The enemy Trundle took our blue and will then clear his top side, while my jungler Vi will clear her bot side, then Trundle's blue side, meaning my jungler will never be on the top side of the map. This is one of the worst possible situations to be in for a top laner, and it doesn't really happen often in the low elo, but the first thing I'm going to do to deal with this is drop a control ward in this brush to make sure Trundle isn't repeat ganking. Since he's not here, that means he's doing red, which gives me a little bit of time to try and crash this wave on the tower. By crashing it, the wave will push back to me, meaning I don't have to walk up in lane if I don't want to. I can play safe if I think Trundle is going to gank. As I walk up to the wave though, notice how Riven is posturing just like at level 1. 
She looks like she's trying to fight me or trade, which isn't good for her since I have a huge minion advantage. If I didn't have that brush warded, I would think I'm getting ganked. But when she walks up, I auto, then put Q under me to force her to dodge or walk away from me. She uses E and that's perfectly fine. Now I kite into my minions and use my E to grab the cannon and slow ribbon. She's level 2, and we saw she used her E to dodge my Q, meaning she doesn't have W yet. So with good spacing, I dodge her third Q and can now fight her back with the rest of my E charges and minions, and it makes her panic flash my Q even though she wouldn't have died. But you can see how much damage I did. While my two abilities are on cooldown, I pop a potion and walk back into my wave. I'm one minion from level 3, and as soon as I get it, Riven jumps in. I silence her right away, then put Q under myself again and finish her with my E. Then I can get the wave under tower and crash it, which makes me perfectly safe to the split map, weak side situation that I'm in. So we covered a lot of fundamental concepts in just under 2 minutes of laning. Wave control, knowing when to TP, auto resets, trading around cooldowns, getting the push advantage with enemies leashing, kiting backwards and forwards. All of these are crucial to being a good laner. Now let's wrap up TP decisions and talk about the last thing on the list you need to know for the season. In this game, I'm on Fiora and we're in the mid game. All of the enemy tier 1 towers are down, Baron is up, and my TP is up. So I want to split bot here since I win the 1v1 versus the enemy top who is a Lowy. I'm going to hard push and hopefully bring multiple members to me, and maybe my team can get Baron while they chase me. While I'm doing this, the enemy team actually groups up in mid and is sieging our tier 2 tower. And this brings us to our last tip on the checklist, knowing your win condition and sticking to it. Let's look at both team comps. The enemy team has a Lowy top, Poppy jungle, Mal's mid, Xerath and Ziggs bot. My team has me on Fiora, Eve jungle, Akshan mid, Kate and Yumi bot. One thing should clearly stand out to you about the enemy team is that they have insane team fighting potential with all of that AoE, AP, and CC. If I tried to TP in and fight them here in a 5v5, it would be really hard, especially when I don't have a QSS for Malzalt if he decides to ult me. Now multiple things could happen here. My team could foolishly try to fight and just get wiped clean, and we would just lose the game. That's a possibility, but it's a low one. But whatever happens there is out of my control. I'm just going to push for the tower and hope for the best. If it looks like the fight is going well, maybe I could TP flank, but let's see. As I start breaking the tower, the enemy top laner is feeling the pressure, and they TP in to stop me. This is good because now I have the TP advantage. My jungler and Yumi end up trying to gank her, and she flashes away, then we get the tier 2 tower. Alright, before we see what happens next, it's important you understand what just happened. I knew my win condition here is to split push, as they have better team fighting, and I don't have the items I need to basically 1v5 a team fight if I needed to. So I accepted that the situation my team was in was out of my control, and just kept pushing. My pressure made the enemy top back off and TP in to stop me, which prevented them from sieging further for a bit. By sticking to my win condition, we got the same amount of towers as the enemy team, and we got a TP and flash out of their top laner. After we take that tower though, I see the rest of the enemy team is trying to siege again. So I start recalling to spend my gold in case they keep pushing. I know a lot who have to catch bot wave, and she doesn't have TP. Luckily, they do try to keep pushing, so I spam ping all my way and TP in behind them. They might be stronger than us in a 5v5, but a 4v4 is a completely different story believe it or not, especially if I get a flank. As expected, we easily kill them even with our Eve not using her ultimate. An enemy Alawi shows up late as well to donate us the last kill for the ace. And with that, we can take Baron completely uncontested. So I just showed you a situation where I held my TP and didn't fall into the ARAM 5v5 trap that most low elo players fall into. In a situation right after where I did use my TP so you could see what a good TP looks like. But let's wrap things up by quickly talking about win conditions for champions other than Fiora. Let's say you're on a tank like Cho, Maokai, Poppy, or Orn. Tanks excel at team fighting with their CC, so if you're a fed tank, you might think you should just group all the time. This actually isn't entirely true. If I'm fed on Cho, it's still important to push my sidewaves out and kill the enemy top if they push too far, just like if I was on Darius or Jax or any other bruiser. But after pushing my waves, and if I'm put in the same scenario as the one earlier where I was on Fiora and didn't use my TP, as a tank I might actually use it there, since I can carry the fight much easier without needing like 6 items. I can easily tank Malzalt without exploding like I would on Fiora. Basically, League isn't black and white enough to say, always do this on whatever champ. Your win condition can change with each game, depending on the situation, so you have to identify it and more importantly, stick to it like I did on Fiora. Alright guys, those are my top 3 things to focus on for this season if you want to climb. Laning, TP usage, and sticking to your win condition. If you really focus on improving these 3 parts of your gameplay, you will climb extremely fast, trust me. Now, what you find here on YouTube is just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to unlock your true potential, then you need to dive into skillcap.com. We have the largest catalog of League of Legends guides in the entire world. 
with over 1,500 guides and 350 unique courses. You get brand new guides every week exclusive to our website, along with our Smurf commentaries where our challenger experts walk you through how to carry out of the exact rank you're stuck in. Still unsure? Well, you can have all your questions answered by those same challenger experts. Need one-on-one -on -one coaching? We got you covered with hand-picked coaches trained to the highest standard. Don't have time for that? Use Direct Pro, pick a past game you played, and within 24 hours get a personalized video from a top 100 challenger player breaking down exactly what you can do better. The best part, all of this comes with a rank improvement guarantee. If you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using Skillcapped, you can claim a refund, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Head to Skillcapped.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. Alright, that's going to bring us to the end of this video. I wish you good luck this season, and we'll see you in the next one.